Hey guys, it's Lance of Max Sound Solutions, and today I'm going to install Tahoe onto my base model M4 Mac Mini, which I have inside this case. And what's cool about this case is this is the TB1201 by Acasis. It has two NVMe slots. I can have my external user account home folder on one NVMe and Time Machine on the other, and it's all in this nice case. And I have a video review on the TB1201, so you can check that out up here. But I I just wanted to see how Tahoe works with the external home folder setup, which I have many videos on. So let's get to the install of Tahoe Developer Beta. Okay, so you have to be signed up to the developer program to be able to install the developer beta. So I am signed up for that and I'm just gonna whiz through this and install the update now. And I'm doing this on my base model M4 Mini, which is just sort of a tester unit for me. I would not put this on my main machine because it's a beta and it's the first beta. So there's definitely gonna be some quirks. And fast forward through all the progress because it's gonna take a while. So the installer was 17 gigs, and uh, I first was connected via Wi-Fi, but then I connected via Ethernet and got much better speeds. It's always better to be connected via Ethernet if possible when you're doing a big Mac OS update. So it's done with the download, install, update, and now we're restarting into the installer. And it did a firmware update, and then it went back to install mode, and it was done. Software update complete, your Mac has been updated. So we'll click on continue and see what comes up here. And some important things happen here that they've changed. Uh, number one, they're trying to get you to store your documents and your desktop in the cloud. I do not like doing that. I'm turning that off and we'll continue from there. And this is a big one. Apple is now automatically enabling File Vault on install. So you don't have a choice, they're enabling it for you. And if you don't wanna use it, you have to turn it off. And what that does, of course, is encrypt all your internal hard drive data. But I don't really like the fact that Apple is doing this. Uh, yes, it protects your data more, but it's also a little intrusive. And having File Vault on might make it more difficult to log into your external user account. I'm not really sure, but stay with me because we're gonna try it out. And there we are, we are on our desk desktop in Tahoe. And it kept the wallpaper I had on. I thought it would switch it to the new Tahoe wallpaper, but we'll go see what Apple has to offer. But uh, let's have our first look at Tahoe. I'm in dark mode, obviously. And after playing with this for a little while, dark mode and light mode, they're both kind of blinding. I got a headache really quickly. Obviously, this is gonna be adjusted because it's just full on black or full on white. And the white is really contrasty. I mean, it was hard to look at, so I stayed in dark mode. I was really hoping they'd improve the system settings, but it's the same. It hasn't changed. You can't even expand the window. It's only like up or down. So let's just quickly check out some of the new changes in Mac OS Tahoe. One of them being you can go in there and change your icons to have different looks like you can on your iPhone or iPad OS. They all now have this functionality of changing the look of your icons. Honestly, I'd only use the default or dark mode. I don't like my icons all looking the same because it just makes things harder to find. So they've added global icon color changing. And I gotta say, it doesn't do anything for me. And when you switch to daytime mode, ouch, it's just blindingly white right now. I'm sure this is just temporary for the beta and the next beta version will have some fixes. But man, I was getting a headache just trying to look at this stuff. And let's go look at the wallpapers, see if they've got any new wallpapers. They've got one and that's it. They have now combined the wallpaper menu with the screensaver menu. And I couldn't find it at first. It was hard to find, but there it is. Sorry, I switched to dark mode. I couldn't take that blasting white anymore. So it's a drop down menu now, pops open this little window, and you have to click on custom to even see the other screensavers, which is just kind of confusing and weird. It took me a while to figure it out because when you click on the desktops, that's not actually the screensavers. Those are just the dynamic desktops. You have to click on the screensaver menu and then you can put it in custom mode and that's what allows you to switch to different screensavers. So I just clicked on custom and there are the videos for the screensaver. 
So you got to click on custom, then select your video. And the new screensaver doesn't work. It just is a standstill. So that's obviously still in beta mode. Launchpad, which I was just starting to get to like, is now gone, and they call it Applications. Um, but it's sort of connected with Spotlight. I just don't quite get what's going on here yet. Uh, when you hit Applications, it doesn't even show you all your applications. I don't see Terminal in there, so it's a little weird. I have to play around with this some more, but not sure I'm liking it. So this new Apple Games app is basically Game Center. It's not the App Store for games. It's basically you can just launch where you left off in a game. You can join games with other players. So it's sort of Game Center revamped. Now here's something I'm really excited for, which is so basic, but they've brought back being able to color code your folders. So you can now put tags and your folder will change color. You can have multiple tags and whichever one is the last tag you picked will be the color of the folder. And I always loved labels back in early OS 10 and they got rid of it and they changed it to tags. Now we've got our folders back to being color coded brighter than ever. I love it. And the main thing I wanted to test here is your external user account, your home folder on an external SSD and to see if it still works in Tahoe. Okay, so I've attached a hard drive. It's a clean two terabyte and I'm gonna set up an external user account on that drive. And if you wanna learn how to set up an external user, watch this video up here on the right. I've done it so many times, I'm not gonna go through it again in this video. I'm just gonna breeze through it and make sure you can do it. So after setting up the new user account, I'm gonna reboot and we're gonna type in our password and log into our external user account for the first time. And is it gonna work? Gotta be a little bit patient. I'm not gonna speed this up because I want it to be real time. And bingo, we're in folks. It does work. You can still set up the external user account. And I did test it out with File Vault turned on as well, and it seemed to work just fine. It was not an issue logging into my external account. And of course, if you do encrypt your external drive as well, then you will have to log into the internal user first and then switch to the external user. Not gonna turn on Apple Intelligence yet. There we are, we're getting the welcome and we're in. So you can set up the external user account. If you already have one, you're probably good to go. If you want, when you install the new OS, you might want to do it via the internal user first and then log back into your external. I always update from my external user on my M4 Pro Mac Mini. I haven't had an issue. One little quirk that I will mention is that you can see when I open up the user account folder on the external drive, some of the user folders are not there. They're missing. And the way to get them to populate is you can either like launch the Photos app, launch the Music app, and they're going to automatically show up. Or you can go to Finder, Settings, and just let up on Settings and they populate. Why this happens, I don't know, but I figured it out and there you have it. Then they all populate. So there we are, we've got our external user and we're running the first developer beta of Mac OS 26 Tahoe on our base model Mac mini with an external two terabyte drive with our user account on it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Please give me that thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and I will see you on the next Max Sound Solutions video.